are better ways to keep cool. Call KS Services and receive a new Bryant unit with no payments and no interest for 18 months. Stay cool now and pay later. Visit callks.com for more. It's the Weather Extreme video. This is the morning edition. This is for Tuesday, the 15th of September. I'm James Spann. Sally barely moving in the Gulf of Mexico this morning. But what happens with that hurricane will, of course, determine our weather here through midweek. Let's go right to it. This is the upper air look across the country. Steering currents are very, very weak. And again, Sally just meandering about down in the northern Gulf off the Alabama Gulf Coast. That was the radar this morning. Soaking rains falling, tropical rains for southern Mobile and Baldwin counties over into the Florida Panhandle. And flooding will be the big concern with this thing. Uh, There's a flash flood watch in effect from roughly Interstate 20 South. Uh, That's Sumter, Green, Tuscaloosa, Jefferson, St. Clair, Calhoun, Cleburne counties, south down to the Gulf Coast. Of course, we have hurricane and tropical storm warnings in effect for parts of South Alabama as the system gradually approaches. In terms of the tornado threat with Sally, this is the severe weather outlook through tonight, actually through 7 a.m. tomorrow. And we've got this uh, standard slight risk, the areas in yellow for Uh, Parts of Mobile, Baldwin, Escambia counties in the Florida Panhandle got a marginal risk as far north as Grove Hill and Greenville. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, a marginal risk basically south of a line from Mobile to Montgomery to Auburn for the southern part of the state. We do not expect a tornado threat for north or that part of central Alabama north of Montgomery at this point. So let's just go right to it, and let's talk about uh, our friend Sally here. Now, the good news, the winds have decreased overnight. Uh, We talked about this yesterday. It's just about stationary. It's drifting west-northwest at 2 miles per hour. In stationary systems like this, you know, some people say, well, it's going to give it more time to strengthen. Well, no. What happens here, we have upwelling. It brings up colder water from below, and it just sits there. So the SSTs, the sea surface temperatures, have decreased. And that's one reason for the weakening. And the other thing, we do have some shear now. And we're going to see that as it approaches the coast. So now this is forecast to be a Category 1 at the time of landfall or maybe an upper-end tropical storm uh, early tomorrow morning. One way or the other, the impact will be the same. Uh, And then the system, you know, weakens and hooks northeast through parts of central and south Alabama over into Georgia and South Carolina. Latest storm surge numbers uh, for the Alabama Gulf Coast. Four to seven feet, Mobile Bay, six to nine feet. A lot of water is going to be pushed inland, even though this is not a major hurricane. And the surge over to uh, Navarre and uh, Destin, two to four feet. Panama City Beach, Cape Sand Blast, one to three feet there. Now, this is the uh, latest QPF coming from WPC. And uh, you can see those areas in uh, uh, purple near the Gulf Coast, Mobile, Baldwin counties, the Florida Panhandle. That's uh, 15 to 20 inches, and we might see some spots down there with over two feet. The flooding potential is extremely high. And inland, you can see the uh, orange, that's 6 to 10 inches. And uh, that would include places like Montgomery and Opelika. And there's going to be a really sharp drop-off on the northern end of this. Basically nothing from the system for the Shoals and Huntsville. Uh, Cullman, you might not see much at all. Hamilton. Uh, and again, th- that Interstate 20 line is kind of the, the we think, the cutoff at this point. And that's the reason the flash flood watch stops there. But this could be adjusted again. Uh, this is the excessive rain outlook. There is a high risk of flooding on the central Gulf Coast, the Alabama Gulf Coast, over to Navarre Beach and Destin. A moderate risk up to Interstate 20 over the next three days. So quickly elsewhere, uh, we got Paulette that's on the way out. Uh, hurricane, we have uh, Vicky in the eastern Atlantic. That will dissipate probably soon, not doing anything. Uh, a new wave that's come off the coast of Africa, that might develop. And then Teddy, that could be a major hurricane, uh, but that's going to be gaining latitude. That's ultimately going to recurve, not affecting the United States. But our friends in Bermuda, again, will have to watch that. So let's go to the GFS. This is the 06E run, 4 o'clock today. Uh, The westerlies, again, north of us. The steering currents are pretty weak. We've got uh, Sally just sitting off the Alabama Gulf Coast today with just buckets of rain down there for the uh, Gulf Coast region. But for the northern half of the state, quiet today. Just a few isolated showers around, uh, mostly cloudy, high clouds around today with highs in the low to mid 80s. This is tonight, just after midnight, 1 a.m., Sally slowly just creeping up toward the Alabama Gulf Coast. And then this is tomorrow afternoon at 4. It's in southwest Alabama. 
And this is where rain will be increasing during the day, becoming widespread. And in terms of the wind inland, uh, this is not like an Ivan or a Frederick. You're not going to have just trees down everywhere and major power outages. We'll see winds of 15 to 30 during the day, and that typically doesn't cause a lot of problems. Um, and, of course, we have the chance of a few isolated tornadoes over the southern part of the state tomorrow, so keep that in mind. And then Thursday, it's on the way out, so rain should be ending from west to east during the day Thursday. Uh, this is the QPF depiction coming from the uh, high-res NAM, and, again, it's it's been doing the hokey-pokey with that northern extent of the heavy rain. It's jogged north again. Uh, last night, uh, the OZ run had it farther south, so we'll just have to wait and see. But again, Interstate 20 for now seems to be about the best cutoff region for the heaviest rain. Friday, it's all gone. We're dry. Beautiful day. Sunny with a high close to 80. It's going to feel great. Saturday, the weekend looks fine. Highs in the mid to upper 70s. This is Sunday. Lows, I think, will be in the upper 50s Sunday morning. Really, really beautiful fall weather. And the same thing on Monday. We start the day 58 to 62. The high will be 78 to 80. And this is Tuesday a week from today. Again, the westerly is dipping a little farther to the south, but again, we're in a very dry air mass. We'll go out 10 days. This is Thursday of next week, the 24th. Upper high out west, but troughing on the east coast. And once again, nice and quiet for us. Here's the rain for Birmingham off the GFS Ensemble. The mean between 3 and 4 inches. Some of the members go up to 7 inches. And, again, that's the uncertainty with uh, how Sally behaves. But look at these numbers. 90s are gone for a while, hopefully for a long while. Highs in the 70s and lows dropping off in the 50s here on the National Blend of Models by Sunday and much of next week. That's just great. And the new CPC outlook. September 22nd through the 28th, showing temperatures around here below average. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes in the blog. The next video here by 4 o'clock this afternoon. If you can't catch us this evening on ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. Never wait for hot water again with a tankless water heater from Plumbing Experts. Tankless water heaters are easy, convenient, and now more affordable with a no interest financing for up to 18 months. Stop with the cold showers and wasted water and call Plumbing Experts today.